Hi everyone, welcome to another Hatton's Model Railways live stream and this morning we're, ha we're having a bit of a look at some of the engineering wagons that run on the British Railway Network. We're celebrating the release of a brand new book of zine made available by Key Publishing, celebrating these services, operations and the vehicles themselves from the 1960s, so the transition era and the inclusion of steam, right through to the early 1990s and it's a really in-depth guide covering how to recreate different services on your layout, the purposes of many of the vehicles, and some great inspiration and photos too. As you can see here, this is just a sample page of this particular book zine, giving some more of the in-depth information on some of the ballast hoppers there, and then again showing some examples of the modelling that you can get too. So this morning we're going to be covering just a little bit of our own history about these really iconic vehicles and how you can get some of the models onto your layout. If you want a little bit more information, don't hesitate to ask a question in the chat, but I really do recommend clicking that link in the description and picking up a copy of this book zine while stocks last. If you are interested in engineering trains or in British Rail operation over the later half of the 20th century, this one really isn't one to miss, so make sure you pick up your copy now. Otherwise, let's have a look at what we've got. There's so many different types of engineering trains, it was really hard to choose what to have in front of me here today, but I thought I'd stick with a few basic types to group together the different vehicles and show you some of the options and opportunities you can put on your layout, whatever the scale. As you can see here, I've got models in N-Gage, double O gauge, O gauge, and there's more available besides these two. So the first ones I thought I'd start off with, we head back more towards the 1950s and 1960s. A huge amount of engineering stock had been inherited by British Rail from the big four railway companies and some of the other smaller companies too. But at this time, a lot less of the operations were automated. So we had wagons such as the Grampus here coming into stock and other similar vehicles being inherited from those railway companies. And these were used to transport ballast to ballast sites to relay the rails in that area and pack the ballast and make for the better railhead conditions too. We also had a range of quite different flat wagons out there to be able to transport the sleepers and the rails themselves to the work sites for the traffic to repair the railways and the network, certainly after World War II and the subsequent expansion of the railways and the electrification programs of the 1950s and 1960s. So a lot of those wagons were purpose built for the jobs. Again, looking at the Grampus wagon we have here from the 1950s, these were purpose built with opening sides so they could transport ballast and then when they got to the site location, they could actually drop off the different loads in there and the ballast could be used once the train pulled away. It was all very manual in those days with these particular types of wagons, but that was set to change in around the 1950s with automated ballast wagons, well, semi-automated ballast wagons coming in, such as the dogfish and catfish wagons. These actually discharged the ballast underneath the hopper straight onto the track so this would save a lot of manual work removing the ballast from these particular wagons. You also got a lot more engineers vehicles at the time being fitted with cranes so they could lift the rails off the wagons and onto the track. So for track repairs in the network there too, it became a lot easier when wagons like this came into the stream. So you started to see more wagons like this, you started to get the larger ballast hoppers too. These have become from types used on the London South Western Railway and the design eventually evolved into what we know now as the sea lion and sea cow ballast hoppers. And again, these have the similar discharge right from underneath the hopper. So it goes straight onto the track there, especially useful on the former London South Western Railway where a lot of electrified lines were prevalent, just a little bit safer to work on those parts of the network too. A lot of these wagons were vacuum braked at the time, so they could work with steam locomotives and a lot of the early diesel locomotives too. And that's something that they kept up right through the 20th century. Some of these wagons remained in service for over 50 years and some of those original designs from the 1950s and 1960s can still be seen out there too, including some of the flat wagons used to transfer rail. 
These are salmon wagons, and as you can see, most of them are set up as flat wagons for carrying rail or other equipment, but you can see just at the end of that particular vehicle there that one of these wagons is set up with a crane so it can unload the rails from the wagon too. So there's a lot of variety in these vehicles, different vehicles for different jobs, as you can see. And while most were purpose-built, at the same time, BR did start to convert a lot of its redundant wagon stock into engineers' vehicles to provide that little bit of extra life for the vehicle and, of course, to use or reuse a useful asset too. One example of that is our own 00-gauge Warwell wagon, which one of the identities is this electrification colour scheme in the engineer's olive green. The olive green that you see here is a familiar livery for the engineer's stock from the 1960s and 1970s, with it having its own distinct colour scheme. And this particular wagon, formerly a well wagon, as we can see there, used for military traffic and other duties, gained these stanchions on the top and was then used to help electrify some of the lines in the northwest of England. So this, again, will be able to carry different equipment on it and was used for that purpose. So as well as building brand new wagons to use across the UK, wagons such as this were converted when they had a useful purpose within some of the engineers' fleet. And you could see these trains operating all over the UK of many different styles. You didn't really get a combination of, say, electrification wagons with ballast wagons. You would find that they were specific to the duties they had at hand. And looking at some photos here from the 1970s and 80s, we can see a Class 33 on the southern region with some of those Grampus wagons we mentioned previously, fully loaded, heading to drop off some new ballast which is conveniently located under the locomotive too. Maybe it has just unloaded that particular ballast there, or maybe it's on the way to unload some more. So a lot of these wagons would have the opening sides and then the ballast would be taken out from that. A lot of these wagons also performed as spoil wagons. So the used ballast, the old ballast, or indeed if they were repairing or rebuilding lines, they'd take away some of the soil or grass or whatever else they had dug up put it in the wagons or purpose-built spoil wagons, and this would be taken away from the sites too. So you don't particularly need to load them with ballast. If you are having a train leaving the engineering site, it would have whatever they needed to take away to put the new ballast in there too. So we're still heading through the 70s at the moment. A lot of new wagons are coming in, but this really was a time for those older wagons to be sticking around. And those designs stayed the same, although new wagons were built to slightly modified previous designs with the bogey hopper sea cow and sea lion style we see at the front here. They were being built right up until the 1980s, but still to that very similar 1940s design with a couple of slightly more modern amendments on these vehicles. We can see here a full ballast train with three bogey hoppers. And then the further we head back, the smaller the hoppers get towards the back of the train there, but we've still got a full load of ballast heading off to our engineering site. And these trains could be seen all over the network. As we mentioned, they had to go wherever they were needed. So it was not really a part of the country. You wouldn't have seen an engineer's train in. But if you are putting one on your layout, just have a little bit of a think about why that train would be passing, how many wagons it would have behind it, whether it's going to a big relay, so it's a full train of fully loaded ballast wagons, or it's just going topping up a siding at one end of your layout, and therefore it will just be a locomotive and a small number of wagons, as we can see here in Engage. So this fleet really carried on until the 1990s. As you'll see in the book, there are a few more conversions and trial conversions of different wagons and second-hand wagons from BR's freight fleet, but a full new engineering fleet was required by the time privatization came in and new vehicles had started to be built. Some of those include the ballast wagons, the auto ballast wagons, introduced by rail track and still used by network rail to this day. This is a Batman model in double O gauge. And you can still pick these up from our pre-owned department if you keep an eye out for them. And these were a modif well, a modification, a brand new version, similar to the sea cow hoppers that we had seen before. One thing that changed at the start of the 21st century, during the days of British Rail, each vehicle had its own code. 
So a TOPS code identifying a different type of wagon was installed from the late 1960s and into the early 1970s too. But to identify them further, they gained their own names too. So you'll have heard me refer to a lot of marine life in today's session. And a lot of the wagons were named after different fish or fish kind as they are known. So we have the dogfish, we have the sea lion, the turbot, quite a few more there too of those named after various different marine life, just so they could tell very easily what the different wagons were and what purpose they served to. And I think if anything, it started a tradition and a lot of the vehicles started to fall into that. So especially if you pick up this, you'll see a lot of the vehicles in there named after more and more exotic marine life. So it does add a little bit of interest to your layout to have the various different names of these wagons coming onto your services too. So while we've got some purpose-built wagons, such as the JNA hoppers that you see here, these were longer bogey open-sided wagons, and with more powerful locomotives being readily available, these more larger wagons, shall we say, became more prominent rather than the four-wheel and small bogey hoppers that we've seen before. As you can see, in some cases, we still had the auto ballasting wagons and a lot of the duties remained mechanical. But these JNA hoppers are being unloaded, as you can see, by a digger there, a Unimog hooked up on the railways. So you can still have a bit of interest there if you want to recreate an unloading scene such as this. Otherwise, you've still got your similar wagons going through there. You've still got your flat wagons to carry in rail and other duties and a lot of specific vehicles designed for the installation of electrification and other items out there too. But it's not all purpose-built items. A lot of wagons, again, were converted to suit the purpose as and when they were needed. And one of these is our own Hatton's Originals FEA wagons, previously used as container wagons, they could be temporarily set up with track panels such as these on the top. So they could then take pre-built track panels of up to 60 feet in length and be able to transfer those to the work sites rather than building up the track panels once they got there. These wagons were owned by GB Rail Freight and Freightliner and they were still used to this day. So you can have one of these, put the track panels on, use it as an engineer's wagon. And then if you wish, you can change it back to a normal intermodal vehicle for hauling your containers. And that's one of the things I really like about engineers trains. There's a huge amount of history and it really does change throughout the last 50 and 60 years. But there's some of the most unusual wagons on the network that you can put into your trains, whether the purpose built vehicles or whether they're items that have had a full conversion from a previous wagon to serve their brand new purpose. There's some great opportunities, not only to pick up some fantastic models available right now, but for getting your skills going with some of the plastic kits we have available from the likes of Parkside Dundas, and they can be picked up and added to your layout too. And what better way to get some inspiration than this new book that's come through with 132 pages of real life photos and some great modeling in there too describing not only the in-depth history of a lot of these particular vehicles as you see here but also giving some great guidance in how to recreate some fully authentic engineers models such as the sturgeon rail wagons with the cranes that we see here even going down to the details of the chains to be able to keep the rails on the wagons while they are moved across the network so I've got to be honest, guys, there's a lot more to engineers wagons than this. And we're certainly looking at covering it in formations guides in the future. So do keep an eye on our channel for more information on these. If there's any particular ones you would like a closer look at or you'd like to learn some details on, don't hesitate to put a comment in the video below or get in touch with our customer experience team who can always pass on the video ideas to me or they can help you out with some great advice there and then. But in the meantime, if you would like to learn some more, click that link in the description as we have this bookazine available right now. As said, it's absolutely jam-packed full of information right from the early 1950s up to the mid-1990s and slightly beyond too. 
it's certainly the first time I've seen engineering wagons covered in as much depth as this. And even I learned something, well, learned quite a lot actually from this particular book. And it's given me some inspiration for some winter projects too. So have a look at the models we've got available right now. We have a huge amount of engineering wagons, whether you're looking for ballast vehicles, rail vehicles, spoil vehicles, all different duties are covered by the items that we have available at the moment. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it's given you a little bit of an insight and hopefully giving you an inspiration to learn some more about these fascinating vehicles and how you can put them onto your layout too. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Real Railway profiles, for more skills cast sessions, and of course, all the latest model railway news too. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.